let me win. But if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. You can see the determination and the pride on their faces when they're actually on the start line, whether they come first and win a gold medal or towards the end of the pack and win a, a ribbon. You know, they're so determined to represent Special Olympics Gibraltar and Gibraltar as a nation. The slogan for the Special Olympics was Meet the Determined. And both my friend and I said, what a nice way to describe the athletes because they really are very determined individuals. Athletes are given an opportunity of three or four days to wind down and get to know the country. You always feel that that's not what they want. They want to be there in the pool, in the track. They know that once the opening ceremony is over, they're in there competing. This year it was very relevant and they had so many beautiful places they could visit, but they wanted the competition. She's always been a water baby. She's always been in the water. Sally Ann did very good in the preliminaries. She came second on her race. She downed her, um, her timings for 14 seconds. 14 seconds. The day before her actual race. She went to practice on her races and she just slipped. When she put her hands on the ground, uh, she fractured her wrist. I mean, it's, uh, she's, she was unlucky. When she came back, it's taken uh, a while to, to readjust. But now she's training, swimming again. And she's determined, yes, because she keeps asking when's the, <laughs> the next game's coming on. <laughs> she loves the experiences. We are raising my favourites. The winds blow very fast, you know? Anyone who saw him compete saw that automatically, I mean, his races were a challenge for him. And I think it was the first time we ha we've had an athlete had to do those distances and he did it without any fear in him. Fear poison. That's a long way, eh? He was very brave and very determined. Who's saying, come on, come on, come on, come on Douglas, come on Douglas. The swimming pool was called the Hamdan, and I went with my coach, and he, and he met me. She took me to say the oath, and I remember saying the oath. Let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. Well, they gave me that extra minute that I can win. World Games this year, there were 200 nations competing. 7,000 athletes attending. Overall, it was excellent. It's just great to see the, the excitement of the athletes. They are training so hard in advance of the Games, and once they get to the Games, you know, everybody gives it their all. And I know it's so important for them to know that they've got such a support from Gibraltar, and it's just great to be there as part of Team Gibraltar. To see those faces of, of, of these uh, young athletes um, with courage and just being there and, and doing what they do, it's incredible, it really is. A lot of years we spent at sports days as parents because Julian's had issues with his coordination and he has quite a bad tremor. Sports days have always been quite stressful as parents to watch. In the races he'd be like one of the ones that they get back, he, he just never was a sportsman. Special Olympics golf has actually enabled him to do a sport that obviously you don't do at school. He's discovered that he's got a love for it and actually he's good at it. I've been watching all these Olympic games, well, the normal Olympics and uh, or maybe like the Paralympics and stuff, and uh, seeing people walk out in front of like thousands of people and on live TV. I was on live TV. <laughs> It was amazing. It's it's really it's really breathtaking. Yeah, that's the word. Yeah. Special Olympics is obviously about sports, but once you're in it, you realise that it is about so much more than that. It is about friendship through sport. It is about discipline. It is about development as a team and maturity as individuals. But above all, it is about inclusion and a sense of belonging. When I met Darren, he's a good man. 
because I know him better well because he's a pretty man in the world of my training. That's my coach. Simon is, is my wife. This race is very important to us. He doesn't need to be pushed into training. He will just do it naturally because he loves what he does. Dorian started off with swimming, but Marvin wanted to join, so he started off uh, playing uh, football as a goalkeeper. And from there, they branched out to other sports. And when I went and to Abu Dhabi, I find a nervous pain the countries and everything. Both brothers won gold medals in the same day and in the same World Games. I don't think that's been achieved before. Bocci, two gold bonds. Came first and the doubles I came second. The new ball, new bag, it's made me help. It was a strike with a new ball. <laughs> they aspire to do their best. I never expect them to win any medals, but they always come back with medals. I'm Francis Morrow and I ran a half marathon. I wake up at 6 in the morning and every day I do one hour and a half. I don't think about it, I wake up and I sit and just do a run. Any new games come out, we meet a lot of people there. First time all the competition we have, we bring a lot, a lot of medals over. Go and see it, you will notice more. Not here, but outside in the worldwide committee. We're a happy family. Very big family we are. I'm training for the next games. Do I uh, maybe I'll have my fun? When I joined in the Special Olympics, I never ran before, but I like it. The, sil the silver I won for 400 and the go for 800. It was a nice place to visit. Hot but <laughs> exciting because of lots of people there. I felt like crying. I didn't cry but <laughs> proud because you were there with Gibraltar team. I was so happy and all. The socialising and the inclusion that Special Olympics provides beyond sports is just as important. It gives our athletes confidence. It gives them a real sense of purpose. I just came into this game now, but to see the people, the carers and, and, and the helpers, and who for years and years and years have just given up of their time, expecting nothing in return, other than what they get because they help in terms of what they feel. It's, they say that it's in giving that you receive, and I have received so much more than I gave that it, it just makes everything that we did together so worthwhile. It was 20,000 volunteers. Unfortunately, you still see it sometimes today that people don't accept some of these individuals for who they are. So it, it's great to go in that environment and see all of them like so buoyed up. So yeah. I think they all deserve to have a, the feeling of purpose and they all deserve to be like listened to and invested in if they have interest, especially like where they can Lost of five months, so yeah. We have now opened a special Olympics sports complex, and this centre is part and parcel of trying to integrate everybody into our society, despite whatever disability you have. It's got to be inclusion, and that's why this centre is the one that I got close to my heart. That is really first class. It's going to have a centre for Special Olympics in Gibraltar. We'll be able to focus more sports actually in one place and we'll be able to perhaps move into sports that we haven't actually been able to participate in before. It's a home for Special Olympics in Gibraltar which has been badly needed for many years and you know very gratefully the government have come up with something for us and it's really a first-class facility. Whoever we are we all have the same obstacle in our way, ourselves. Only we stop ourselves from doing what we can. We have to be determined to get beyond who people tell us we are and be 
and be determined to be who we can be. People with learning disabilities can be outstanding athletes given the right opportunities. And as athletes improve and they grow, not only will their performance improve, but also more importantly, so will their confidence. Inclusion matters to all of us, and it's important that we individually and collectively try and achieve it at every level.